Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, I picked this up, I don't know, about three years ago. A friend of mine contacted me, said a friend of his was cleaning out a garage or a barn, and this was sitting in the back of it forever. I want to say at least 30 years. Couldn't have been longer than that. And he thought it was a Shriners go-kart. Don't know whether that's true or not. If you do look up Shriners, that's uh, a uh, organization that's a non-profit Actually, I believe it's a very good one. And they would have parades and all, and they would get together a bunch of guys, and they would have different types of vehicles they would go put around on in the parade. Do like stunt, stunt work. <laughs> and yeah, supposedly this is one of them. If you look, I do kind of remember seeing something like this. I don't know if this one is or not. I do believe it's from the 50s or 60s. It's definitely built like Model T, Model A, Model T. I think I'm going to go with Model T. It's got a decent front end in it. I haven't looked at it very closely, but it does look like it has a spring set up in the front end. It's got a little, you know, compared to a regular go-kart, got wooden spoke wheels on it. I haven't done anything with it since then. I went and I grabbed it. It was actually in New Jersey. And he had bought tires for it and tubes. And I was all set to go start making a video of it. They're looking at it. That's a 20 inch tire. It's got 16 inch wheels. <laughs> like mice got to in the seats back there a little bit. It's got controls. Kind of, they look like they copied it fairly decent with all the stuff that it uses. I don't know if that's, I'm sure like one's maybe throttle and one's choke. Again, not sure. Looks like it had a windshield that folded up or went up and around. Maybe it had a, a canopy or something on it. Wood spoke wheels. Looks like it's got scrub brakes, and that's probably the brakes that rub against the tires. It's like a Briggs, probably like a Briggs three and a half horse. What a funky gearbox, huh? Not sure what all that is, missing no belts on it. Oh, it's got a name on it. Let me get you in there. So that might date it. I don't know, does it even have a differential? It might. Going across. Not sure what all that is. So, it's time has come to see if we can resurrect it. We can bring it back to life. I don't think it's any kind of speed demon. I, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> it's probably like, you know, like a 10 mile an hour set of levers. Are they independent? Yeah, they move independent of each other. See, so they might have been repaired at one time. Not sure what they do. They're working the gearbox. All right, so let's get the junk out of the center of it. Let's start doing a little bit of assessment. We'll start looking probably into the engine first. And we'll go from there. I did buy tires for it already a, a while ago. I bought some 16-inch uh, tires and tubes. I believe it came with tubes. We'll find out. I took the tubes out of there. Let's have the center. I don't know what that would go to. Well, I guess we'll find out. It looks like a floor mat. Actually, it looks like one of a drain for a dish or a sink, huh? Maybe. I'm glad it doesn't have a gas and a brake pedal down there because I don't think I'm going to fit in there very well. I haven't tried yet. <laughs> Let's start looking into the engine. Of course, that's the first thing that we want to see we can bring back to life. Let's go see how things are. Hopefully, it was just kind of put away and not ridden anymore. They didn't go away with any problems, but if not... We'll figure that out. It is already missing a belt, so something's up. Let's get a light. Take a peek in there. Going in the hole. Actually, it looks pretty decent. See a little bit of crap around the pickup right there, but nothing terrible. You may not have the fuel anyway. A little bit of rust. A little bit of rust on the side. Nothing bad though. Let's go see if it's got any oil on it. That's not happening, huh? Let's go get some pliers. Hopefully you don't break them off. That's just plastic. There it goes. It looks actually pretty decent. Yeah, it's full to the top. Let's go give her... I'll get the plug out of it. Again, it's been sitting for so long. We'll get the plug out of it. We'll put a little bit of oil down there just in case we don't damage any of the side walls. They get a little bit of rust on them. Nope. 
looks pretty good. Let's go give her a little bit of... So the valves are here. I'm going to try feeding it, this is the flathead, over to where the piston is. We'll give that a little bit of oil going around. The piston should be right about there. So I'm trying to get it on the uh, rings. Let's go give that a spin. See how it does. Feels pretty good. Rope's pretty short. It's like either that's when they first did it and painted it or somebody repainted it. The cord's all red. It's got a short pull to it. I think our chances are for spark. I don't know what this uses for. It's got to have a kill on it somewhere. Let's just go give it a yank first and see if it has anything. Get the way down there. I'm going to look right down there. Well, I don't see anything, but we may have... Uh, what do we got for throttle? Let's try moving some levers around, see if, what that does. Let's go try that like that real quick. Now, let's go look and see if it has a kill anywhere on it. See if there's a kill wire popping out anywhere too. Where's our light? A lot of times there's a little tab that you would push down and, and short out to the spark plug. Or it would have a wire on it. I do not see anything coming off the magneto. Again, it's been sitting so long, I'm not surprised it doesn't have spark. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. You? No, I'll see. Generally on the linkage, it would be like a ground wire sticking out somewhere and it would when you would go to like an idle circuit would kill it i don't see any wires coming out of the engine anywhere so i don't see either one of these being the on and off just the throttle all right let's um we're gonna need to get that pull start cover off of there i don't know if we're gonna be able to clear clear that let's take the air cleaner out of the way we have to pull the motor off to get it not that it's any big deal We'll shift it over. Yeah. I figure before we condemn it, let's just go throw another plug on it real quick. See if we get anything with like that. Just in case. And hold it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not seeing anything. More than likely the points have just corroded themselves shut and they're going to be... Inside here, there's going to be a cover. Under this cover, under that flywheel is going to be another cover, and the points are going to be in there. They're going to need to be a little, uh, little bit of filing on them. All right, let's dig. Let's get the air cleaner off of there. I don't know if it's bolted or it twists or. Yeah. Horsehair type. Probably should have some oil in it. Maybe. We're gonna, let's go just take, I don't know if we just unbolt it and put it right on the bench or just take a couple of the bolts up and swing it a little bit. Let's get one, two, three. We'll get the cover loose. See how much room it takes to get out of there. I have a feeling we're gonna have to move it though. Will in the bet. There's only one thing metric in this whole thing. Can you guess what it is? It's pretty much true on all, almost all vehicles. Even if they're 100% made USA from a long time ago. We already looked at it. You know what it is? Spark plug. Metric thread. I don't know why that is what the purpose was, who came up with <laughs> saying, okay, this is what we're going to go with. The only thing I think it has connected is the throttle cable. I'm going to leave that on for now. Maybe we just kind of turn it enough to get that pull start off of there. Yeah, now we got room. Go buzz those three bolts out. 
You know I'm gonna have to take that throttle cable off there anyway. I'm procrastinating. You think they painted it that color? Or you think somebody painted that later? I think it's got many hours on it. So we need to get under here and then pop this flywheel off as well where the access would be. And it's got no kill for the ground, I don't see it. Alright. Dig a little further. It's like someone's actually. Looks like the spring is ready to pop out of it. It's like a little retainer clip right there. Oh, looks like somebody might have been in there before us. That doesn't look right. You know what that does? Down here. Wrong way. It's a socket for the pull start clutch. Now we should be able to let's go give her a little wiggle first. Probably gonna have to go put a couple screwdrivers behind her and give her a love tap. Yep. Little trade spots. So get in there. Just gonna put a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna throw a clamp on that. Should hold it. the key. Key stayed in the flywheel. That's the cover we've got to get under. That's the condenser and we'll have a set of points right there. Let's go get a light on those. They don't look bad. I, I, I can't say that. I'll mount that somewhere. Not much corrosion on them. Let's uh, see if I can rotate it from the pulley on the other side. Make sure they're opening. They're opening. I'm looking right there. Yeah, they got some crap sitting on top. Not bad though. I don't know if it shows up or not. A little crap right on the top of them. Let's go get some... A little bit of a fine file. We'll drag it across the top of those and see if that brings it back. A little bit of corrosion around that condenser too. I'm looking down in there. They fail over time too. Wires look okay. Coil looks a little... Suspect. Was that rubbing on the flywheel? Did it have, let's go look at the flywheel real quick. Mm. It looks weird, like... You think that was rubbing or somebody sanded that? Maybe it was rubbing. Is it breaking loose? Is it popping out of the... No, it's pinned. I wonder maybe if it didn't have spark to begin with and that was the last thing it was used for and they couldn't get it. That looks like somebody sanded that, right? Yeah. All right, let's go drag some uh, across those points, see what we get, and we'll, worst case, it's going to be that the condenser is no good or the um, magneto is beat. Yeah, let's give that a couple of drags. Definitely don't want any oil in there. It's a dry. Let's see if it's a cane debris on there. It needs to be dry. Might even have an extra set of these. I seem to remember seeing a pair of these in my stash. Alright, let's go throw that uh, just a mag back on it again because we need to be able to spin the pole starter. We'll just set the pole starter on it, see if we get any 
response out of it. You guys might have a better view than I do. I'm looking at that magneto and just trying to see if there's any rub marks on there that would have caused what we saw on the flywheel. I don't see it. Again, it's, I think somebody sanded that by hand. That was probably what the issue was and then I had no spark and they parked it. Let's eyeball it right there. Oh yeah, nice, excellent. I didn't think it was gonna come back. I actually thought I was gonna be totally screwed. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go button this back up fairly decent. I'm gonna go put all the pieces back correctly and uh, we'll move on. You know what's coming next, right? So hoping not to get into that carb, but that's the choke. Is it going? Yeah, real gummy. Did it go internally? Yeah. It's moving. A little lube won't hurt. Let's go leave that in the open position and we'll dump a little bit down the spark plug hole, give her a yank, see what she does. I believe it is on idle. We're gonna find out. So we'll give her a little bit of that. That might have been a little too much. See what we get. Left handed yet. Let's <laughs> go try it that way. Again, I still don't think it's idle. See if it'll take it right from the carb. Oh, I don't have to plug it in, so. Alright, <laughs> sure run. Well, on the louder side, too. Um, we don't have an idle circuit. Probably go see what is going on with that and with the governor. Where's the light? So I would think that's the governor arm. And let's go mount that somewhere. And so that's the other direction. That would be all the way up. That'd be less pull on the spring. So. It's got a lot of spring to make it. That seems more than it should be. We should be able to have that almost no tension on it. What, what happens is there's a fan inside of here. And the fan pushes on a lever, which is the governor. It's called a vein. And it moves, as the air blows across it, it moves the vein away and slows the RPMs down. That's what this arm is connected to on the inside. And you see where that set screw is? Well, that's full throttle right now, and that's idle. So something's making it so the revs are still all the way up. I don't know if we can go up any higher with this. Is that even doing anything anyway? Let's go take a look at making, can we get any more? I think that'll come up more. There it goes. That should relax. Man, it's still got a lot of a lot of tension on. That's still gonna rip kind of high. Let's go. I wonder if I could disconnect that cable, push that cable up all the way, and see if it it'll, it'll relax itself enough where it's not influencing it like that. Yeah. Oh well, you can see. So this is the throttle right there, and that's got to go up. And right below it is the mounting screw where the cable is, and the cable's only allowing it to go so high. Let's try cracking that screw, I hope you can see it, that screw loose right there, and we'll let the cable lift up a little bit and see if that spring will relax enough where the, the throttle will want to go back to an idle position without that all that tension that's on there. Is 
that enough. Let's go fire it up one more time. It's not resting on there, but what ha may happen as soon as I, I spin it up with the fan, as soon as the fan starts to spin a little bit, it may back it right off. Let's just go see if that took care. If not, we're gonna have to go start looking into that governor setup. Let's refuel and refire. I put half the air cleaner back on. I should be able to sneak around to gas him, but it was leaking right at the bottom. Let's see if that works. I should have oiled those cogs too, huh? Seems better. I don't know if we actually put fuel in it, how it would operate. It's not screaming like it was, but it still seems like it's it's fighting itself. Do you wanna dig into that carb? You just wanna try putting some fuel in it first. It did look pretty clean. Let's go dump some in, see what happens. We'll dump a little in. <laughs> we won't get carried away. Should I? I'm gonna take an air gun and blow down around there. See if we can blow some of that, just that fine dust that's sitting there. Out. See if that makes any dust. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think that was a good idea. Is that showing up? Let me back you up. Vintage fuel right there. Turns into dinosaur dust. Let's go dump a little gas in there, see what we get. See if it'll feed through. Yeah, let's not go crazy. I don't know if that valve's open or closed or what. And we're gonna need something to short out that plug wire too, because if it stays running, we don't have a way to shut it off. Normally, on these style engines, there's a little metal flapper that would have been like a tab that went over here, and you, you would just ground out the spark plug. And that's the way it would shut it off. We don't have that. I don't see it leaking out of the bottom of the tank yet. I don't know if that's open or closed. Let's go find out. My guess is it was closed. I don't know. See how far it goes the other way. Generally, these have a lot more thread to them. Like, it's not like a open and closed. Usually you spin it half a dozen times. There's like packing up inside here. All that does is open, like a, a needle backs down out of the way. There's a, there's a seat up here and a needle, which is this pin going up. It just pinches off this location and then it allows fuel to go across. Uh, I don't know, just yank on a few times, see if it filled up the float ball. I'll give it a little squirt to get her going anyway. It should stay running after that. And I think I just squirted oil in it. <laughs> Whoops. I might smoke a little. Alright. That's more like it. Uh, and we need the screwdriver. I put it in my pocket so that we can kind of short it out or, or yank the wire off. See what we get.
Let me... You think they would have a kill on it somehow. Sounds good though. Nice. I don't see a leak in you. <laughs> Alright, we gotta figure out what's going on with that. Uh, it, it's not really bolted on, it's just the clamps there and I got two bolts just sitting in the holes with nothing on them. I wonder if we should pull that cover back off again. We'll take a look at the the governor setup, see what's screwed up. Something screwed up in there that it's not allowing it to go back to idle. I, I didn't think it was right. But the thing too, I wonder if maybe the cable got caught on something sometime in its life and got you know yanked real hard. That's why I tried pushing it you know, back up in its location. Plus I gotta, I gotta lube that little uh, pivot in there anyway. The balls are, are kind of sticking. Hey, when you got sticky balls. I'm gonna take that cable, it's all the way off and this is all the way up. And even with that, you know, again, that's full throttle and then that's idle right there. I don't see that spring really isn't even doing anything at that point. And let's go pop this cover back off again. There you go, now I can see a little bit better. So, this is the fan. Air comes in through the center, exits out to the fins. It draws through the middle, out around the fins, and it blows across the top of the cylinder head through that cover. Well, this vein is in the middle of that. Air is trying to blow across that. So, you influence it with throttle, then once it gets up to a certain RPM, that is gonna be blowing so much wind that it, this is gonna to try to take the throttle back off again. That, again, that's idle, that's full throttle. So you've got to try to figure out why it's trying to influence that so much. What we can get. This is all the way up. This, this really can't even go up anymore. Uh, we could possibly maybe lengthen that spring. I know somebody was trying to get more speed out of it. What happened to it where it's, it's this fashion. I don't see anything wrong in here. Sometimes you could bend these tabs and stuff too and get like a little more or less out of it. I'm just kind of thinking if um, maybe the spring locations are backwards on the bottom. We can get a better light in there. So the, the cable comes up, there's on the, the bottom of this, called a nub, and there's two holes in it. One's got the spring in it and one's got the hook from the throttle grabbing down. And, uh, the give part is a spring. The cable is not directly connected to the, the, the lever on the handlebars is not directly connected to the throttle. It's just connected through a spring. And the more you pull down on it, the more you influence it by making the spring longer, but it still has to go through this assembly to work the linkage of the, are you following, are you following that? <laughs> did I lose you? Sorry, if I did. So if we take that spring right off, can we get it off out of there? Yeah, see, so it'll re it, it will rest at idle, but that's where it needs to be. That spring is just out of whacker, not sitting right. So that would have to come up with no tension on it right there. It have to, it'd have to reach to that point. So that's what we got to do. We got to make it so that there is no tension on it, almost no tension on it, and go through that hole. But you can still see how much it's pulling. I'm going to go take a peek down below. See if maybe this is done out of whack. Those two holes that are down there. Or maybe somebody pulled on the spring and kind of like bent it around and made it shorter. Something's up. Hopefully it shows up. But it does look like somebody took the cable and they pulled it up. Just kind of like bent it over. Tried to get more out of it. Again, trying to get more RPMs. Just trying to overthrow the, the governor spring. So I'm going to go take this spring change it, put it on that location. It'll be more of a straight line up and down right now. I think it's, let's turn it sideways. So the spring is kind of laying on an angle like that. If I could change the bottom hole more straight, it'll make it maybe a little less pull. And if not, what we'll do is we'll take some of the bend out of one out of that end, say we'll, we'll recrimp it so it's a little bit longer. The cable doesn't want to come out. It's pretty tight in there. Yeah, I think they took it and like jammed it through and bent it over. It doesn't even want to really pivot. Let's see if we can get the whole rod 
that whole assembly just come right out of there? I think it's going to be too long. I'm going to have to take the carb off to do it. I want to get rid of some of the bends that are in it. See, like there's a, there's a bend right here. There's a bend right here. Kind of just make it so it operates a little smoother. It's going to make me take that carb off no matter what. Let's go. We can give her a little bit of persuasion. Maybe without snapping anything. Yeah, so I was trying to get that cable out of there. You can see it's really bound up in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to swap the positions of it. We might get it. But I think we're going to end up having to. There it goes. You can come out. All right. Yeah, this is those two holes I was talking about. I'm gonna go work on that a little bit, so you can just go tap it on the bench, get some of the, the wiggles out of it. I like that it lengthened that spring, and that should take care of it. Looks like it's returning. Let's go fix that pull start. And you could also kind of get an idea how much wear an engine's got on it. I'll show you in a sec what I'm talking about. So there's like four balls that um, go out to the centers, and a little paw that jams between the ball. And one of these walls right here and you can see how much wear is on there that's why it's skipping right there it's got a, a decent wear spot on. i'm gonna go clean that up and wash my balls <laughs> clean these little areas up sometimes it gets tacky what it does is uh there'll always be one that wants to kind of fall you know whatever one's the engine's up on its side wants to fall down into the the low location It'll allow itself to jam between there and this little corner of the wall right there, and it'll catch on that. And as soon as it starts up, they all spin and, and go all the way out, and they just stay out of play. There's not an issue with them. But sometimes when you have sticky balls, they'll stay in an outer position. It won't roll back to where it can catch it on the corner of that wall right there. I should say the corner of that wall. If you get, you start something up and the pull start starts to shoot the rope and the handle back out again, that'll be down the center of this right here between this and the shaft that's sticking out of the motor. They start to bind. This um, essentially sits still when the uh, engine started and it just kind of spins on the inside of this and refrain from putting a heavy oil in there. The, the drag of the oil across them can also cause that. Uh, for the most part, if you just clean it, We'll do good, but you are going to put a light uh, oil on there. Put a very, very light oil on it. And it's going to clean that out. And we're going in dry. All right, look right there. You can see that it's pretty much on idle. Let me rev it up. That'll be full throttle. 
Let me see how much resistance it has. And yeah, I should go back to idle. Hopefully it goes back to idle. Let's go fire it up now and see if that, when we start it up, that fan kind of kicks it the last little bit. Hopefully it didn't flood it. I've had the engine in all different directions, so it may, may put up a little bit of a fight. I would still think at some point we have to adjust that, uh, clean that car, but right now everything's doing what it should be. We'll keep moving on. Let's go and figure out what happens with this transmission setup. I think it's got reverse. I think this like ceramic disc, you push it back and it, 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 cuts, it touches this one and then this one should have a belt on it. So let's grab, where are those levers? Right over there, these two guys. Let's go see what does what. They're kind of tied together. I think one's one's break, and they're just kind of draggy. So I say the outer one looks like it makes contact, yeah, with that. You need that got reverse, huh? I don't know if we can get any more. Can we adjust the tension on that anymore? That might be enough. We'll, we'll leave that be. And then for drive, so I would think we'd have like a neutral, where would, like how a neutral lock. Yeah. So this one, I'm not sure. They're both, they're both kind of moving it because they're both dragging on each other. So which one works this? Or is it both at the same time? No. All right. So that one's break, and the outer one is drive. Feels like it's a little bent or something though, because it's dragging a lot. We could shoot some lube down in there. Let's get a light. Yeah, so that, that's one pivot for the brakes. Looks like there's a knuckle down in there. And as he said, it looks like an adjuster maybe for the brakes. So we got to find some kind of little belt. I can go from there to there. And I wonder if like neutral would be this thing. We could kind of make that so where, can we move that? Let's go see where that is right now. Might be out of whack. Sorry about the camera dancing. So. So that would be neutral, right? They just this, this spring kind of where the lever will stay. And then if you pull it more, it locks it. So yeah, we can tweak, we can move this lever up and down and change that. Let me go see what we got for belts. We don't have to do anything to change that, right? We don't have to take anything apart. No, let me go see what I got for little tiny belts and see if we can have something go from there to there and we'll start guesstimating and then we probably chase a new one once we get an idea of what size we need. Welcome to the land of belts. <laughs> Everything from tiny to these. Let's go start with something, I don't know, maybe like that. Let's see if there's any other little tiny ones here too. I don't think it's going to be much bigger than that, do you? 
We got more over here. I don't think I have, generally there's not that much small stuff. All right, we'll go with that and kind of adjust. What's that one right there? About the same size. Looks it, doesn't it? All right. Don't forget to look up on the floor. What's that little tiny one right there? Is that a tiny one? Nope. Ah, step close feet. These two are the same. Let's just go see if that's gonna be in the window. I think it's gonna be, I don't know. I think it's gonna be too big, but it's hot. Yeah, let's go see. Let's go push that like, how far, far forward. Yeah, so we're gonna need at least an inch shorter than that. The motor doesn't have slides on it yet, so it's not like we can uh, adjust the motor. I don't know if we want to do that anyway, because then we lose reverse, right? So we need a little smaller than that. Unfortunately, I think it's too late today to get anything. Let me go shopping, see what I got. So I scrounged around a little bit and I found one belt, pretty, it's pretty beat, but it's roughly the size. It's the wrong diameter, but you can see at least it does tighten up. And then we can go into reverse and it, it gets out of the way. And it's, it really doesn't tighten up. <laughs> I think it'd be good enough if we jack it up though, and we can kind of like spin it and see what the transmission does. So let's get a jack or something underneath the ass end of this thing with the wheels off the ground. And we'll fire it up again and just kind of play with this stuff. I'm kind of wondering if it's a live axle or if it's got a differential or one wheel drive. We're gonna find out right about. Not live. I don't know. Oh, that one's free wheels. And this is the drive axle. It's kind of weird. It goes across to this side. Yeah, so that's the drive. I don't know if that's meant to have some suspension or it's falling apart. The knuckles flapping on the left side. Show you. Yeah, right down there. I don't think that's supposed to do that. What's on the other side? It looks like there's a nail or something in it. Yeah, it's like a nail underneath it holding it up. On the other side. Now it's the, there on the other side too. Hmm. Is it broke? It's kind of weird, huh? All right, let's go fire it up and see what the drivetrain does. Worth a shot. We can uh, chase that tomorrow. Why does it seem like we had it better though? And the levers all the way down. I'm sure there might be some kind of adjustment in it, but so it's the outer one. Yeah, the outer one has to be down all the way. Is that better? Yeah, no, just 
too much slack. Way too much. All right. We can uh, I'll play with tires. Hopefully what I got will do what we need to do. We're not even going to bother trying to put air in those. Let's go pull one of them off. What's that got? Like a, a pin or a nail in it? Holding it? We can take that off. We can lubricate it. And we can see how this is put together. Definitely looks like it almost ground its way through. The cotter pin is all <laughs> what's left of it. It's all ground and pushed outer. Easy to get off anyway. Yeah, so so this one's the floater, it just coasts along. Yes, yeah, see what the it's got that weird like almost just like a piece of wire underneath it. Look at this supposed to float. Huh. I don't know what the purpose of that would be. Like flex that's in it, because the other side does has the same amount of space that's in it. A little oil cap for lube in it. Unless they're just kind of wore out. Maybe there was something else that was there. And somebody did whatever that is. It's just like a piece of wire just holding it, you know? I think it was like a a metal brace or something there. Like what would you what would the purpose of, the, of this be? There's no spring or nothing to it, unless this is... Nah, it's not a spring. I doubt it. That was one rotted dry tire. Did not want to let go of the rim. So the rim looks like it's a bicycle wheel on the outside and then wooden spokes and a hub in the middle. We suspect it's probably got screws going down to the center. Let's see what we got. What are they? I wonder if they assembled it from the middle. Yeah, there's no, um, it's not like there's screws or anything. So they must have assembled, must have pushed each one of these in where they go, then put the hub together and tightened it up. Yeah, there's no adjustment on them. I'm going to go clean that up on the wire wheel. You can put a tire on it. The call for 16s, I thought uh, early tires were made of real rubber. I was thinking of white. I wonder if that might be a little too white, though. We could dirty them up, I guess, later. So why we throw some like black paint on them and just kind of like rub it off to give them, you know, a match the look of the body of it. I don't want them looking spiffy, but we'll see. Let's go get one on there. We'll go from there. Well, I can tell you the new tires went on much easier than the old ones came off. As long as you just buy fingers. I don't know. They're looking kind of shiny to me. Let's go put it on the machine. Let's see what we get. Which way was it? Like, like 
don't know. If I had to do it over again, I'd buy black tires, I think. That's, it is what we got. I won't say it's terrible. I think if we darken them up, the problem is it just kind of reminds you of like a, a cheap kid's Walmart 16 inch bike, right? Well, we can always make them dirtier. We'll leave them the, that way. I'll change all four of them. And then maybe in the future we can kind of, right, maybe like black shoe polish or something, just kind of rub it in and this kind of beat them up a little bit to kind of match the rest of the machine. All right, I'm gonna go knock out the other ones. And I'll bring you back. Like this is kind of the look I was going for. Get that light out of there. That's a Model T with the white tires. I think what the difference is though is the red rims compared to the uh, black ones that are on there. Maybe gives it a little bit different look to it. Focus. Eh, still not sure. Not that I have a choice, right? Plus I paint them. I actually ended up leaving the, t the rims right on and changing them on the machine. It was much easier. Like, I don't know, about 10 minutes a tire. Only one that needed a little bit of love was this one. I was missing a bolt and they were all kind of loose. And I, It's not true. <laughs> She's got a bit of a wobble to her, but at I think this thing's probably going to have a top speed of about 10 miles an hour. I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. The front ones, it's rubbing on the jack right now. Seem to be pretty decent. I guess they don't take as much abuse as the rear. Plus the front's got like a legit copy of what would have been on the front end. Oh, Model T. It's got you know, a suspension bar going across, regular tie rods, got a steering box. Hey, I wonder if that little um, piece of metal that we saw inside is like to make it pretend like you have a, a hand crank to start it. So, tires, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe what the problem is, is that they're so new looking on something that has so much patina to it, it just doesn't match it. Maybe if it, you know, we dirty them up or get some like old motor oil and kind of like rub it on them and then rub them off and make it look like they've been on there for a long period of time. And on that note. Yeah, so again, I'll, I'll sleep on that. We'll see what we feel like in the morning. We think this windshield setup is, you think it's like a, no, can't go any further than that. Maybe it's just the actual, like, frame. Yeah, maybe it goes in there. I wonder if you can loosen those up and... Yeah, it's supposed to pretend like it's a windshield. <laughs> Getting back a little. We'll go with that. It's got brackets on the rear, too. So what would, like, those have been, and it's got wing nuts back here, like something else. I don't know. Do you think it had like a? It'd be hard to get in and out of it, though, wouldn't it? It's hard enough as it is. Maybe there was a cover over the engine. Yeah, you would think there'd be more mounting points back here, though. All right. Well, I'm gonna go rest on the tires and see how I like it. Let me go back and look at it tomorrow. I'm gonna go chase a belt tomorrow. And hopefully that actually kind of gets us to the point where you can almost put the thing around. We're getting spoiled with these clean gas tanks and carburetors. The last four or five machines have been cake. <laughs> I'm due. <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a doozy of it also. Oiled up all the linkages, all that seems like it's pretty good. We can adjust so the brake lever is touching on this side. It rubs against the tire, that's all it's got. And probably works as a parking brake also. But the other side, grab a light. The other side's not touching. It's got a little bit of an air gap between the tire. But it looks like it's got a, a set screw and a jam nut right there. We can loosen that up and give it a little bit more tension against that, that tire. Again, if they weren't knobbies, it'd probably be a little bit better off too. But I have a feeling they're going to wear down pretty quickly. <laughs> Let's see if we can tweak that one. That should be the jam nut. Sometimes they're, they're kind of drilled on the inside though where they can go. That uh, looks pretty good. You can pick a position however we want. We want wrong one. So we're going to want Go try it right there. With that 
do it. Yeah, feels pretty good. I'm gonna eyeball the other tire. See how much squish. Can you see the squish? There you go, I can see the squish. See how much squish we're getting on the tire. So that'll be drag and then you know, like park and brake. It just the linkage hyper extends itself and pops into place. I'll just make it so those two match and I'll tighten that jam nut back up again. Alright, it's so the next day. And we got a belt. If that one's not it, we got another one. And if that one's not it, we got one more. It does look like somebody's used them before. They got them out of track display. They get all like fingerprints and dirtiness. <laughs> I said, I guess I can return them if I don't use them, huh? <laughs> Alright, let's go get uh, one of those to fit on there. Actually, before we do that, let's clean these pulleys up a little bit. I think this thing is like ceramic and there's a bunch of rust on the inside of that. Let's go see if we can clean it up with a wire wheel so it doesn't chew up reverse and, you know, while we're at it, might as well hit the other two. So we got a 22, a 23, and a 24. Let's go for the 23. We'll see if we need to go up or down. Plus this belt's a little thicker too. Make some difference. Did that come back any further? Yeah. Is that what we would want? It has to get under there, doesn't it? it kind of works as a brick. There we go. So, reverse, neutral, and we can't, it should like hyper extend itself and lock in like the brake does. Let's go try the 24, see how that does. If not, we know this one will work. Four's got the one that's Let's get this off of here. Can't cut it. In case it goes back. All right. All right. <laughs> it's like in between the two of them. Uh, there is an adjustment on that linkage right there. I don't have a light out yet. I wonder if we can get it so that... <laughs> we need a 23 and a half. <laughs> uh, I see like a spring-loaded linkage here. I'm going to go back to the 23 and screw around with it a little bit and see what we can come up with. So, I went and tried finding a 23 and a half inch belt and they don't really have that in that small of a size couldn't find it and came back decided to try to work with the 24 to get a combination that would work that's what it is on there now uh i can get it to tighten the belt up but then when i went to go which is essentially moving this pivot point forward more but then when it went to go come back and make contact with reverse it wouldn't work i was getting frustrated and I let it down, let the jack down. Remember the play that's in the axles? How the axle can move up and down about an inch? Well, when I did that, and I put everything right back where it was, <laughs> seems like it's got good belt tension. It, it, it hyper extends and locks in, so it'll hold the place. And then reverse, seems like it'll do decent. I wouldn't say it's got a, a really good bite on it, but how often do you use reverse, right? <laughs> so I don't know what's again what the deal is with those wheels having that play that they're able to slide up and down the axle whether that's on purpose or it shouldn't be like that I just don't know so we're gonna run it I guess the way it is problem is we can't um, spin it up on the bench because then the axle drops down and defeats the purpose right uh, what do you want to do now I think we can kind of fire it up and see if it'll push forward towards the lift a little bit like you'd be able to hopefully almost stall the engine out at an idle Go see. That's how it starts up. No choke. Again, it's a day later.
Is that what your rim's bent? Neutral seems to be pretty good. Still have to come up with something for shutting it off. <laughs> I see like it should be okay. Yeah, we need one of these. Banana. Short the plug out. Let's go borrow it. It's even the right color. Yeah, something like that. It will kill. I was looking for some tire shine or some WD or something, it didn't have any, so I went and grabbed the jug. I'm gonna put that in a spray bottle and give her a quick little detail and knock some of the dust off of it. See how it looks underneath it. I think it'll probably come back pretty good. It's all original paint. See what we get. I don't want to take it off. I want to keep it beat up looking a little bit patina. I don't want it perfect, but we can get rid of the dust. Looks like it's got like paint over spray a little bit on it, like that white that you're seeing. Maybe something that was painted in a garage and it's got like a little bit of a white tinge to it. That's all right. I'll bring you back when she's all gussied up. That's looking pretty good. I think I want to dirty up the tires. I did like clean up the wheels and then take the rag and, and rub it on the tires just to darken them up a little bit. I think I want to take that maybe a little bit further, just so they don't stand out so much. And I like how much is left on it too, as far as it's a little bit of beat upness and age and rust here and there and dirt on the handles. A little bit of dirt left on the wheels, just to make it feel like it's old. I don't want it to, I don't want it to look like it's brand new. I want it to look like it's, you know, whatever, what's it, 70 years old, something like that. All right, let's go see what we do for the wheels. Got some old motor oil. I don't know if that's dark enough or not. Go see if that'll, that'll stick to it. It's kind of the same idea what I did with the uh, WD-40 and the dirt that was on it. Yeah, I think it's going to wipe off too easy though. So do that a little bit. Let it dry up and then we'll wipe off the excess. Yeah, I think it needs more of like a, a dirt look instead of a, know, maybe black paint and then kind of wipe off. I don't want to get anything on the rims though. <laughs> don't want to get them dirty. Yeah, it's more like it. Load up scotch right with the oil and kind of rubbed it in, then took the, my gloves and just worked it around and wiped off the excess. Plus, if I, when I go to drive it in the dirt a little bit, I think it'll also kind of pick up some more crap in between the treads and just kind of give it the right look because I want the tire to match you know what the rim looks like and the rest of it not all shiny and new I think I achieved it <laughs> that was gonna be sliding all over the road right all right let's go let her down <laughs> all right <laughs> you think about trying to fit in it that's the next thing <laughs> oh. Oh. Actually better than I thought. I thought this thing in the back was really going to kill me. Good thing the uh, controls are on the outside because you would never be able to uh, work pedals down inside there. Go cruise for chicks. No fat ones though. They got about 10 inches wide. All right. 
You know what's next? Me falling on my ass because my shoes are oily. I have to bend those tabs in a little bit, maybe a little to help hold it. Let's open her up. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Runs pretty good.
tippy though, because you're sitting on one side of it, you're one direction. It feels like she wants to flip a little bit because it's got the, the suspension that moves, so it's not like it stays flat, especially in the front. Tires are looking better. That's more like it. A bit of beat upness to them, so the shiniest that they were. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go throw this in the back of Krusty, my old VW Patina truck, and probably gonna take it to a car show this weekend. And I'll just leave it in the back and maybe I'll putt around as my, uh, I don't know, a little parade car inside there while we're going around. It seemed pretty decent. It came back fine. It, it, you know, for how long it sat, it, somebody probably took the fuel out of it and uh, really didn't do much damage to it. Plus, it doesn't like it has all that many hours on it. <laughs> well, guys, I think that's going to be about it. I may have some more footage I could add to the end of this. Uh, I shot when I first got it off a friend of mine. And he had like the backstory on what it was. Of course, that was like three years ago. And uh, I got some other go-kart footage I shot. Uh, from Jimmy Duresta's about a month ago. I may throw some of that. I'm not sure, but uh, you're gonna find out in a second. Or well, there's nothing <laughs> if it ends right here. So with that, guys, I'm gonna sign off. I well, thank y'all for hanging out with me, have a little bit of fun, bring a little junk back to life, and uh, this is one of them. Till then, later. Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, have a bunch of people out looking for things for me that are interesting for us to work on and have little projects with, and this is one of them. Uh, a friend of mine, Mike, contacted me on this guy. Mike, what was the backstory on it? A friend of yours had it? Or? Yeah, he had it stuck in his barn for years. And he got it out of another barn. And he, he never really had it running or anything? He just grabbed it because he yeah. thought it was cool? And Yeah, exactly. And apparently it's a, like a Shriners go-kart of sorts. And you looked it up, you thought like 1959 or something was the year? Yeah, it's a 62 around there. Oh, is that what it came out? 62? Yeah. All right. 59 to 62, this model was made, supposedly, I mean... It's got little, red. little wooden wagon wheels on it. Yep, they're real wood spoked wheels. A cool forward and reverse. Yeah, gear reduction, double reduction. Nice. It's got that original oil bath uh, air filter on it and a little metal fuel line. And it's, it's all original from the looks of it. Cool, cool. It is missing the little cover over the engine, which everybody took off because it got hot. Ah, uh, you know. All right. Well, that's just a, a little quickie on it. We're gonna get it in the truck, and I got another 300 miles to go to, to bring it back home. But it's kind of when I showed you the origins of it. Hey guys, and how's it going? Yeah, we're getting ready to go on a go kart weekend, and I got to get a couple of carts ready to go. And this is one of them. This one was a track go kart uh, from the 80s, 90s that had a five horse on it and we replaced it with I think a 16 or an 18 horse Well, it's been sitting up here for about two or three years since the last use We need to go drag it down give her a once through get her ready to rock and roll And we'll get all our stuff loaded up and we'll go have some fun well, Hopefully the cart makes up better than the forklift did because the forklift just blew a gizzard out of one of the lift seals It's bleeding on the floor All right so like I said, it's been up there for a couple of years now. I think in 2020 was the last time we ran this. And it's a V-twin out of a generator. And we modified the shaft. It had a tapered shaft on it. Modified that to go fit a clutch. And then down to the original drive system that is on the side. Fuel tank over there. I don't know. Let's go just see. It's got a pull start and electric start. Let's see if anything comes to life. Yeah, we got nothing at all. So that battery's probably fairly dead. <laughs> I drove it. I thought I put it in one of the fender wells. I can't remember where it is. And if we can access, I think it's right here. And let me go see if I can get some kind of charger on that. We'll let that charge up. I'll go grab lunch, and I will give it another shot. Do that battery on a charger and we'll see if it takes anything it's totally dead i put a test light across the leads and got nothing out of it but we could put a jumper pack on the starter itself we'll probably just crank it with that i got a jumper pack on it all you guys do is touch i should be able to touch this to ground somewhere and it should crank i don't know if the seat's gonna be good nope <laughs> there we go see what happens the fuel is never shut off and there's a little bit of gas in there See if it'll kick. Oh, we could reach the throttle. That's a choke.
Give it a little more, then we gotta pull that carb. You might not even get any gas in it. I didn't know why I didn't want to pull start it. Now it's getting serious. <laughs> see what we got. There's fuel in there. In the float anyway. Go pop top the air cleaner off real quick. We'll dribble a little bit of fuel down there, see if it kicks off. If not, we'll check for spark. Maybe we lost it. Let's give it a little squirt. Prime for a good time. Let's see if that does it. Probably got to pull that float real quick and clean it out. one of those you probably should with me in uh, the chain that, that's the weak link on it that's made for like you know up to maybe 10 horse I think this is yeah, 16 horse that yeah, sounds good Last time, last yeah, time it went roll. The camera went rolling. Yeah, <laughs> Can you run it up this one? Maybe more straight up. Yeah. <laughs> we got some good footage. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> Dude, this thing is wrecked. Is that quarter twenty? Yeah. Why don't we just throw a wall through the frame and put it right on top of the frame? No, this is, we got some good stuff. Might be a little thick. <laughs> what, you don't want to hand hold it while you're going around the track? What's wrong? <laughs> this is one of yours, right? Yeah, that's the one from last time.
How many laps per tire? Not many. <laughs> Did you get five on that one? <laughs> this one was leaking a little bit on the way uh, on the way down. This one was leaking a little bit on the way down, and I figured that if I was going to do a burnout or a donut, that'd kill that one first. One I had to put a, a stiffer spring in the secondary, so it only went 40, so you could ride it around here. But I put a soft one in it, took it out on the street. I bet you this thing gets seven. <laughs> I bet it would, yeah. Gonna, we're gonna do it at the end of the day, see if I you can. Get down the street. That, that'll do 40. I've had that one up to 40. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I saw it in the video. Yeah, my friend's driveway. Yeah. Took it out for a that's spin down awesome there. Spot to ride. Yeah. And it just been paid so smooth. It was. It's cool. And it's a mile and mile and something long, so you get a that's good a run. Driveway? That's a driveway. Yeah. Dude, what does he do for snow plowing? He owns Most a snow plow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. That could be an issue. It makes for a fun ride, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to pop it down and then take a weld and just put a couple tacks underneath it, make it a little skinnier. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's back on. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, it still works. Just grab and bend the wheel straight. There you go. Nope. Don't go over. A little too far. Uh, <laughs> is that welded on or will that come off? It'll come off, but then just bend it. We'll just bend the tree. Would you get hung up on a tire? I, I either that popped loose and he ran it into the wall, or vice versa. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with the pop loosening. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I miss it? That would have been awesome. Yeah, I know. I was I was doing my first lap on that, so I was behind them. I didn't even see it, so it should be fine. Let me grab a sock and I'll take that off and I'm gonna bang that up a little bit. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Down to 100. I'll tell you when to stop. Keep counting. Don't, don't let go of the trigger! If you want a weld that's gonna work! Oh, yeah, I missed entirely. <laughs> you missed the spot? There you go, that was a good buzz. So, this is your maiden voyage around the track yet? You haven't gone around? No, I was, I was just scoping it out, making sure I had enough. Got an airport tires a little bit. Also, I gotta point it in the right direction. So who went around the who goes around the track and there's sprockets hitting every time? There's white marks all around oh, the backside. Uh, is that art? The, the snowmobile part? Maybe. Dude, like, the one that sounds like a hell. Like, it, like, in that corner there, there's something that's hitting all the time. Yeah, that's um, that's art. That's uh, Clement Smalling. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's so light. Hey, there you go. Go the other way. <laughs> Good 
Got it? <laughs> Go around the other way. You know he's going to come around and smash right into me. It raises the uh, degree of excitement if you have each other going opposite directions, you head at, at each other. <laughs> there goes the chain. Whatever you got. Watch your rag don't get sucked up in the chain. Your rag suck in the chain. Either way. That almost works. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put your rag in your other pocket? Yeah. It's right there. Yep. This guy will pop the blister. This is going to hurt. Oop, there goes the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Got that out of the way. Look, it's a rite of passage. You gotta pop the chain at least once. You got it out of the way, you're all set. That's right. He's hit me. Did it click? Does it clicking going around or no? Not really. It's going around. Oh, good. I was afraid that because it's, it's a little bit larger, it's going to yeah. float over and kind of clip it. I but tried it, to get it tighter, but it ended up getting loose again when I tightened everything up. Did it pull the motor back, or does he think the chain is stretching? I think when the motor sat, you know, once it got bolted down tight, uh, it squished down and gave. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah. Wait. I'm just want to tighten up the rear brake. Chicken. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not even going to try it. Did you see how the rear brake is set up? The cable's short, so they put a little piece of cable. <laughs> That's great. Clear! <laughs> I love those light ones. I wasn't even sure if I was going to fit. I got it. 
Sounds good. It's geared right. I'm like, I'm like a, uh, I'm riding a lot more. Put it in there. Put it in the lower. Yeah. Are you on YouTube? Not yet. Oh, that's not the end. Put that podium down. Don't break. I brought more rod. Yeah, when you get tracked to stop, you don't need brakes. Put your feet on the tires and let it rub. Yeah. That's the brakes first, so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. So what do you think? That was about 55 while I was out there? He was doing good. Yeah. I'm going to change the main jet and see if I can get more top end. Out. Yeah, it sounded like it wasn't revving all the way up? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, 3,000 hours? Yeah. The motor's brand new. Yeah, 3,000 hours on solar. <laughs> Maybe next year we should do 
and what we'll do is we'll do like uh try to match them up. So kind of like this. I think so they need we're gonna have to try <laughs> <laughs> that wheel's bouncing all over out of its hand. That's the problem with that cart. Once it starts bouncing, then it just loses speed and it loses steering, you know? Fast and loose. I know, we get we do like I go fund me. They don't make a good hose clamp anymore. To get a good hose clamp, you gotta go to a junkyard and pull it off of a car for the 50s. <laughs> you can't go and buy a good hose clamp. What about an exhaust clamp or something to go, just the U part of an exhaust clamp over yeah, the top just to hold it? They're gonna go right to there to there, and then to something to support it here to here. Just for today, I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get rid of the rack and pinion and go with just the mechanical. I'll get rid of all this. I'll use these, but. This rack was so fucking loose from the day one. It was like this right out of the box. You see, and it's getting worn out from today. Carpenter's out. Now if the welder will work for you.